So do you think most of your viewers on your channel are IFB pros and people who have been lifting for 20 years? Or do you think they're yeah. sort of beginner, or uh, intermediate kind of guys? Definitely right. So, really so yeah. you recommend on your channel the 10% rule, which you say probably works well for advanced guys, but you recommend it to beginners and intermediates. And uh, yes. you just said that... If you can't, if you're losing more than 10%, to me, that proves you're training hard. Most Why 10%? Most people don't train hard. And it's like uh, Omar had suggested. I agree. He probably is right. I do likely have a bias because I'm training at a good life gym and I'm looking around and it's mostly like really average people, not really competitive or serious people. So it's definitely a bias on my end to see the average person that I see is not training hard. But if they're losing more than 10% of their strength, then they are training hard. So I think it's a good rule as a general thumb for the average person to know that they're getting weaker. They are pushing themselves. Okay. So you could argue all day. That's great. why we're here. What's good, YouTube? Christian here. I'm a clinical lab scientist, and I have 17 years of lifting experience. I'm here to bring back this conversation by Greg Doucette versus Mike Isretel that had four years ago. As we know, in the last four years, science-based lifting has become uh, very prominent in the lifting community. I think I'm in the right position to react to this video and say, hey, who was correct in this conversation? We got Greg Doucette. You already know who that is. Controversial, self-proclaimed truth teller. We'll see if that's correct. And we got Mike Isretel. PhD, the most educated person in fitness right now. Um, you know, everyone sees him as the source for good information for training. This conversation here was four years ago. I'm just going to bring this back because I think it's more relevant than ever. We're going to look at this video and see who was correct. I don't think the percent based rule has any validation. I think it has some interesting potential cursory benefits as, as our, our regulator, but I don't think it has any research validation. And I think we should actually be just trying to optimize based on your body's responses and not on sort of when it gets tired. I think 10% is rather arbitrary. It's uh, misapplied from a completely different area of study. Mine is seems to be based on proxy indicators for hypertrophy, the pump, perception of tension in the muscle, uh, the amount of fatigue and soreness and performance. Yours seems to be based on the 10% number and I've just, uh, you know, one of those might be more precise than the other, and one of those might auto-regulate better to an individual over time than the other. The average person, when you said what you just said, doesn't understand that. Like, when you're saying, do you feel the tension in the muscle? As we see here, Dr. Mike is coming with the science-based verbiage. Listen, man, I'm a medical lab scientist, so I can't understand what Mike is saying. But the average person, like Greg Doucette is about to explain, doesn't even know how to feel tension in their biceps when they do an exercise okay and uh that's part of the part of the problem with the science-based uh lifting community is that they make the barrier of entry to fitness even higher than it needs to be listen the average person needs simple metrics to follow so they can actually get in the gym and fall in love with the gym you know when i started lifting there was no real prominent science-based lifting community on the internet. It was basically just bodybuilders with their, you know, fluff program. So you kind of had to make it up as you went along. And that actually helped a lot of people because it allows you to get in there and start having fun, you know. Whereas Dr. Mike, he, because he's so educated and he has this, uh, you know, science-based background, it's like he wants to make everything logical. And Greg is trying to explain, hey, you know, this is this 10 percent rule thing is just a metric i made up so i could tell beginners how to judge if they're reaching a proper stimulus okay basically if you go into a set and you pump out 10 reps and the next set you pump out 10 reps and the next set you pump out 10 reps you're not really getting a proper stimulus you're not really reaching a point where you're getting fatigued and if you're a beginner and you're not getting fatigued where you have basically no work capacity, you're probably not working hard enough. So in this case, I'm starting to agree with Greg just to start the video off. Um, but let's continue and see if uh, Dr. Mike can change my mind. Am I still feeling my biceps when I do the curler? Like they don't know. But the average person isn't training hard enough. So now, do you think the person that listens to your channel 
do you think the person that listens to your channel is the average person or is that someone that sought you out because they know what you're talking about training and has probably knows a little bit about training and cares enough about it to figure out how their biceps work? I mean, they're watching 30 minute long YouTube. They don't know. I would say half of them are morons. Okay. That you seem to have a, or an interesting, very low opinion of your viewership. Do they I'm, know that? I'm, it's like this. I'm a moron with technology. You guys said how hard it was for me to even figure out Skype. I know nothing. I admittedly am an idiot on certain things. I'm good at other things. I'm good with that. But like, I don't think the average person understands what really feeling sore is or judging how close to failure they've got or how many sets they should do. They don't know. They just, they want to know, but they don't. And the average person that watched my channel wants to be entertained. They don't want to be bored. They want to learn a little bit, but at the same time, they want to not be bored in what I'm saying. So I'm giving good information that will help them. And at the same time, you know, they, it's not hard to listen to. And I'm, I'm trying to speak at about a grade nine level. So like when we're teaching the average adult, you, you speak to them at like grade nine vocabulary and whatnot. They can usually grasp what you're saying. But if, you, if I try to make it a bit more advanced, it would be over the heads of most people. They wouldn't really understand what I'm doing. I try to simplify everything to make it just easy. You watch the video, you take home, you can go and do it in the gym. Yeah, and like... Like Greg is explaining here, when you try to, you know, teach these concepts to the general masses, you got to make it as simple as possible. And the, and the problem is that Dr. Mike is kind of living in a bubble. You know, he's very prominent in the fitness community. And uh, because of his education, he's surrounded by a lot of educated individuals. And he kind of assumes that when he puts this content out, like the general masses are, are going to be on that level. And they're really not. I mean, if you know the fitness community, you know that then the general masses get sold bullshit all the time, right? So basically, the niche community that understands the verbiage that Dr. Mike speaks in is very small compared to the general masses that fall for clap, crap like shake weights and stuff like that. So Greg is trying to introduce lifting to the general masses, so he's going to make it as simple as possible. Now, another thing that I've noticed with um, people like Dr. Mike, who's like super hyper analytical and uh, basically place logic and reason at the top of the priority list is that they miss the human behavior component to fitness because that they themselves think that logic is king. But really, for the general masses, logic has nothing to do with their behaviors as far as like going to the gym and staying consistent, like you have to remove any type of friction and barrier of entry so that people can get into the gym and stay for the long term. Now, when you're adding a whole bunch of parameters and like um, a whole bunch of parameters, a whole bunch of new information that they have to learn, all of this is added friction that's going to prevent a beginner from going in, into the gym and sticking with it. You are bringing, for example, uh, a teenage age male, which would be the tar target demographic for somebody to get into the gym and start loving it. And then they want to push themselves to a certain extent and you start stressing technique to the utmost, right? And the reality is all of us, when we started the gym, like let's say 15 years ago or whatever, uh, we went into the gym and we didn't really know what we were doing. We just pushed ourselves. We were like doing one rep maxes every two days and stuff like that. And yeah, that's stupid. I could agree with that. But it made us fall in love with the gym. And that's the reason why we are still lifting years later is because we actually fell in love with the process. Now, if you make that process boring or not engaging or harder to learn, it's less likely that these people are going to even start going to the gym. Monolith, and there's varying degrees of dedication, the fitness IQ of people, like how much content they've been walking kind of maybe is you guys just generally agree that lifters aren't a monolith. And so there's varying degrees of lifters and the needs that they need. Like some people, it, when it comes to intensity, they, they might need to train a little bit uh, more intensely. Other individuals definitely dedicate lifters that maybe watch uh, the channel or whatnot. They might need to dial it back. Would, would you guys agree? Just I want to open it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that the kinds of lifters more likely to view Greg's content are the kinds that are already going to failure all the time, having the bench drop on them. They like to be yelled at. They like to go hardcore and super all out. 
And I think they're the kind of folks that could benefit maybe more from some more intelligent advice that tells them how hard to go, maybe not all the time maxing out and when to pull back and how to structure their programs in a way that is sustainable for long-term gains. Um, I think that people, it's almost like a preaching to the choir effect. The kind of people that will stick around for a video when you yell at them and tell them they're pussies and they need to train harder are the people that probably pride themselves on training pretty hard already and they sort of nod in agreement like, yeah, tell them, Greg, these fucking clowns out here are not training hard enough. From my experience, the kind of demographic that we're talking about, a lot of college students and uh, folks uh, out of, you know, in high school and just out of high school, uh, they're the guys that are getting stapled with everything. They're the guys round back pulling to failure all the time. Uh, there's tons and tons of people that I've run into into the gym. The kind of young male audience that goes on YouTube are the kind of people that uh, want to bleed out of their eyeballs in training, and they do it all the time. So Dr. Mike is making an assumption that the young male viewer is more likely to, you know, do risky behavior in the gym, and they're more likely to watch Greg. But I think the irony of that is that four years later, I can say that, you know, when I go to the gym now, um, like, for example, I was living in Miami for a couple of years, and I was going to LA Fitness, and I would see young people, as you know, 18 years old, 19 year old, 20 year olds, and they were grabbing like, you know, 15 pound weights and doing uh, bicep curls really slow, you know, trying to feel the tension. But the thing is, like, so the irony is that those same young people that he was accusing Greg of, uh, you know, influencing, Mike is now influencing now that he's more of a prominent YouTuber. Um, and I think it works both ways. So just like a person's going to take Greg's information and out push themselves, uh, there's teenagers now taking Mike's information and under, under performing in the gym or un under doing in the gym, like they're not working as hard as they should. So it's working both ways. I think that's part of the risk of just putting information out. It's like once you put it out, the audience is going to do what they do with that information. And not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to uh, do exactly what you think they're going to do. You know, the pressures of being a more prominent YouTuber that was plaguing Greg back then is now plaguing Mike now. The only thing is, I feel like Mike's so ego invested in his, uh, you know, PhD and education that I don't think he would admit that he's actually having the same effect on the youth today he's actually um they're taking his information and running with it and not in the best ways sometimes maybe folks that are starting out uh beginners and intermediates uh maybe they need to be sort of uh really really focusing on technique consistency showing up doing enough work i think it's pretty easy to do like one or two hard sets to failure slap your fucking bros in the dick and asshole wherever you like to touch your friends after a hard session you know everyone's sweaty the smell is in the air and then go home and congratulate yourself but i think a lot of people don't have what it takes to grind through multiple sets of very effective sets with really good technique. There's nothing sexy about that. There's nobody yelling at you. You got to just do the right thing consistently. But like I said before, it's like, okay, everything that Dr. Mike is saying is correct. Like, yes, you should have great technique. You should be consistent in the gym and you should have a dedicated program and be smart about your training. That all in a vacuum, you would say all of those are good things and correct. Of course, but I think what he's missing, and again, is with these people that are like super hyper analytical and logical, right? And I work in the sciences, so I'm surrounded by people like this. And when I was in college, I was surrounded by people like this. It's like they miss the human behavior component. Like the the thing that makes, you know, the other style of training effective as far as like going into the gym, going balls out with your bros and blah, 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 everything that he made fun of is that it makes you fall in love with the process. People need to go in the gym, have fun, love in the process, uh, start to love the process so that they can keep doing it for the long term. If you just make it this science experiment, most people are going to quit because most people are not hyper analytical scientific types. And I know this because I work in the sciences. A minority of the masses are actually these logical thinking, uh, rational types, okay? Most people need to be giving simple metrics to follow okay if you make it too complex they're not going to go to the gym i think there needs to be a graduation process that takes place whereas when you're a beginner you keep it simple and as you progress because just like mike just said you don't even need to make the routine that complex when you're a beginner 
you're going to grow if you just go to the gym and stay consistent. So the most important thing about that is to make the gym fun enough that people are going to keep going. Okay, It's not actually having the optimal uh, routine or anything like that. Yeah, so I think that the clients that, that Mike would get are probably the most educated and the most, I guess, the most determined to reach their goals optimally because he has the most education and he, that's what he does purely, okay? For me, I started my YouTube channel literally to get clients to hire me for coaching. It's a simple thing, and I think people get overwrapped into too much science behind training. And just like go and work out, enjoy yourself, train a little bit harder if you're not training hard. But there is that 5% of people who are definitely, they're already training hard. And when the clients write me in, and I have a 35 question questionnaire, they write everything, they give me all their information. I write them back, and I'm like, you need to back off. There's a misperception. Like, I'm just out to insult everybody. But if you see me in person, it's different. I just have no tact. Now, I, again, like, I completely agree with Greg here because I think what we miss when we look at the fitness community is that we focus on, like, the niche fitness enthusiast, and we're not focusing on the general masses. Most people don't go to the gym and play and uh, bench two plates, for example. Something that in the fitness community, two plates now is a joke. Like people think two plates is is like nothing, you know. Uh, but the general masses, if you put two plates on a regular person out here, they'll probably crush them. You know what I mean? And I think that's what Greg is like trying to allude to. Is like, listen, the clients that you have and the people you interact with are a small bubble of the actual world. Uh, the rest of the people need to be introduced to the gym. And when you put all this science mumbo jumbo in front of them, they're just not going to want to do it because it's, it looks, it makes fitness look like a giant mountain that they need to climb with a wall in front of it. Essentially, you need to get over the science based wall before you even start climbing the mountain. No, look, the best thing people should do is just go in the gym, right? And when they first get there, they're not going to know how to push themselves. So what, what Greg is saying is like, just push yourself a little bit harder each time until you reach a proper stimulus. And that's why he said 10%, 10% rule. It's like arbitrary number. You know, if you lose strength over time during the sets, you know you're getting a stimulus. That's simple. But Dr. Mike, obviously, because it's his field, he wants to make it hyper complex. And honestly, I don't feel like he really respects um you know bodybuilders in a way like when he talks to you know proper scientists he comes at him with a lot more respect but when he talks to these bodybuilding uh just trainer types you could see that he loses a little bit of respect for him and he talks to them like they they're not his peers when in fact they are his peers you know they're both youtubers they're both in the fitness space and they both train people it's just two different ways to go about it okay yeah, I'd say uh, I would not advise people to listen to who resonates with them. I think that if you're very interested in becoming as good at being jacked and being strong as possible, you're going to realize that calm thought and logic is going to take you the furthest possible. And once you have devised a rational plan, you will be able to execute on that with any amount of effort that is required from you. Because you're the kind of person that really wants to get jacked and you want to do what it takes. So instead of perusing YouTube and looking for folks that are entertaining and you can resonate with, perhaps look for the folks that make the most sense. And once you can understand training from a logical perspective and know what the targets are to hit for each day, session, workout, week, so on and so forth, then you can have your absolute best results if you are willing to work hard. And if you're not willing to work hard enough, you're probably not willing to click on YouTube videos to talk about working hard enough. So it's a self-solving problem. That's the end of the reaction. I guess I'll give my closing statements. Like I said, I, I think I agree with Greg mostly on this video. Uh, again, Dr. Mike is a super knowledgeable person and has really great training information. But a lot of the times, I just think that there needs to be a graduation process. Like Dr. Mike's content is really geared towards the high natural intermediate. What I mean by that is, you know, the people who are going to get the most out of science-based training is actually high intermediate naturals that want to take it to the advanced stage. Because once you, when you're a beginner, 
the most important part about being a beginner is actually going to the gym and being consistent. If you do that, you're going to get results. The program and, you know, the RPEs, how close you get to failure, that stuff will start to set in as you reach the intermediate stage, as you exit out of your beginner games. So what I think is that Greg is perfect for getting that beginner in the gym and start uh, to think about how to push themselves harder each time. Basically, progression. When he says, you know, push yourself harder next time, is just introducing the beginner to progression. It's not for the advanced intermediate who's already pushing themselves and max them themselves almost out to push them past his limit. No, that's not what Greg is for. You know, Greg's content is for the beginner to get them into the gym and start thinking about progression as a concept, okay? Dr. Mike is there for the higher intermediate. If you want to milk out gains in your later stage of your lifting career, Dr. Mike is perfect for that um, because he can really turn your training uh, subtly here and there so you can squeeze out more gains out of each set, you know? So that's what I think Dr. Mike is perfect for. Uh, I think both have their place. I don't think one is better than the other. I just think they're geared towards different audiences. Greg, like I said, is geared towards the beginner uh, who's just getting into the gym and getting into the fitness community. Dr. Mike is geared towards trainers who want to improve their methodologies or people who hire high intermediates or advanced who want to take their training to the next level. Both have their place. And uh, I appreciate both of them. But this was a good reaction. I'm glad I, I was able to find this video. Uh, it's from four years ago. And if you want more content like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.